Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sonali, if you guys don't already know me. And today I'm gonna be doing a what's on my iPhone video slash how I edit my Instagrams. I know you guys have been waiting for this ever since I did my iPhone 7 Plus review. I just wanted to wait till I was home because I love this background so much more that I just like really wanted to do it here. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and comment down below how you guys edit your Instagrams because I'm really interested to know if you guys use Visco and if so, what filter. All right, let's get on to the video. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, I did organize my phone just now because everything was everywhere and my apps were all a mess, so I just tried to organize it as nicely as I could, so I kind of did a little bit of color coding and just like symmetrical theme. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I tried, okay. I personally don't really like folders, but I also don't like the look of clutter, so I just kind of did both, like folders and non-folders just like the apps I think I'm just gonna go through some folders and tell you guys my favorite apps a lot of these apps are just like apps that everyone uses so I have two pages of apps the first one is like a mix between folders and just apps and then the second one is all folders because I don't know I just want to put everything that I don't use on an everyday basis into folders and organize them so on the first page, let's see, we'll go to socialize first. Okay, so Studio is basically an app for YouTubers. You can manage all your videos on there and that's where I like to reply to comments because it's so easy if I'm just like on a long drive in the passenger seat, I can just pull this up and reply to comments really quick. If you guys like to fashion blog like on your Instagram, you can make your Instagram posts shoppable. You guys have probably seen like the hashtags on my posts or any other fashion bloggers. It's like hashtag like to know it. Every time you like an Instagram with the hashtag like to know it, you will get an email with all of the things that they linked on that Instagram post. So sometimes if I post an outfit picture, I'll make it a shoppable post because especially for me, like I always want to know where everything is just in case I want to get it or maybe put it on my want list. So everyone knows Tumblr. And then we got BuzzFeed. I have to be so, so bored to be on BuzzFeed. Not that I don't love it, but if I have other things to do, I just won't go on BuzzFeed but it's, it's really interesting when I do open it. I love taking like the little quizzes. Then I have GroupMe. Right now, everyone's talking in my Bachelor Babes GroupMe. We made like a little GroupMe for our sorority to talk about their premiere tonight. I'm so excited slash really angry that Nick is The Bachelor. Comment down below if you guys don't like Nick or do like Nick. I definitely want to know what you guys think because I'm nervous for this season. Then I have Yelp. Not only do I use this to find restaurants to eat at, but I also use it to find things to do around cities that I'm going to. Then we have the folder Create. Basically, this is all my photography apps and boy, do I have a lot. Okay, so starting off with the top, I have Photos. Then I have Visco, which I never really used to be into. I'm pretty sure I did one of these videos before. And I said Afterlight was my ride or die. Well, I change it to Visco now because you can actually control um, the brightness and the saturation and you used to not be able to do that so I really like it now and I bought a lot of filters so I kind of want to get my money's worth then I have Facetune and yes I do airbrush my photos just a little bit if I do have like a blemish I'm not gonna just keep it there then I have Snapseed I feel like this app is not talked about enough and it's so cool then Darkroom is another photo editing app you can edit each color at a time then I like to use Unum to see if my picture will go with my Instagram theme I try to use the same filter every time, but sometimes I'm just not feeling it, so. And then next to that, I have Amazon. I feel like everything is more affordable on Amazon, and plus, I also want to get my money's worth with this app because I bought Amazon Prime. Then I want to talk about Google Calendar for a second. This app is so helpful. Okay, so basically, I literally write almost everything down that I have to do. Um, let's see. Let's go to one of my months from school. It is actually insane how much I use it. Like, can you see all of this? I love to color code everything, so this app lets me do that. I feel like the regular calendar app on the iPhone doesn't really let me color code to this extent. So I had to get another one. I mean, it's still Google Calendar, which is really helpful because then it can just sync with my Gmail app on my computer. Then I have my bank app. 
Then the next one is a to-do list type app. It's called Todoist. So basically I write down everything that I have to do. I wrote down a lot of video ideas. That's what's taking up a lot of the notifications. What's on my iPhone, I'm filming it right now, so I'm just gonna cross that off. And I can also color code these. Then I have Pinterest, and I feel like I'm kind of over Tumblr, so I use Pinterest as my like adult Tumblr. Comment down below if you do that too. Then I have my YouTube app, of course. Then I have Spotify. I do pay for premium and it is so worth it. If you guys do have Spotify, I highly recommend you guys checking my playlist out. My favorite one right now is then Beat Drops though. I'm pretty sure I've been talking about it since like last semester. But this is like all kind of house music and it puts me in the best moods ever. Then I have Snapchat. So say hi. I think it's so cool how they have groups on Snapchat now so I don't have to individually send everyone like a mass Snapchat. Get out your phone and scan this QR code on your Snapchat so that you guys can follow me. All my Snapchat stories are basically mini vlogs so if you guys like my vlogs then definitely pause this video and scan this QR code. I do subscribe to stories on Snapchat like Tastemade, BuzzFeed, and Mashable. Those are my three favorites that I've discovered. My favorite are the Tiny Kitchen, Tiny food what's what is it called I don't know tiny food videos on taste made they're like so funny and useless but I think it's so interesting they're so small then of course I have Instagram gonna come back to that then we have Twitter and at the bottom I have my phone settings and my messages so the next page the first folder is read I have like all these random like news apps I have my period app of course and horoscopes I don't really read my horoscope that often, but when I do, I think it's really interesting. Then I have Play, and here is all my game apps. I don't have that many. My favorite right now is Pineapple Pen. Laura, my roommate, definitely got me hooked on this. So basically, all you have to do is like tap to shoot, and then it like sings Pen, Pineapple, Apple, Pen. I don't know, I think it's a vine or something. Anyways, I think it's super addicting, and part of me kind of wants to delete all my games on my phone because I never really use them, but I know there's gonna be that one day that I'm stuck on an airplane and don't have service and need a game to play. Then I have a folder called Charge On. This is all my UCF apps. So we have my UCF Mobile, we have my UCF Maps, and everyone makes fun of me because I bought this app. It was like $2.99, but I swear it is the most helpful app I have gotten. Then I have Party Tutor, and it has all the specials for local places in Orlando. So it'll say how much the cover is that night and stuff like that. Then I have Canvas, which is web courses. It's basically like our online portion of UCF where teachers can communicate with you what your assignments are and they'll post your assignments on there and grades and stuff like that. Then I have Travel. I have a Delta app, which I don't really fly Delta anymore because it's so expensive and I just like fly Spirit or something way cheaper. Um, but then I have Disney World because I live in Orlando, Florida and I used to have an annual pass, which honestly I should probably delete that because I don't really go that often anymore, which is kind of sad, but oh well. Next, I have Uber. I love Uber so much. I kind of want to be like an Uber driver when I turn 21. I'm not even joking. I think that'd be the coolest job ever. But if you guys have not used Uber yet, use my code SonaliP52. Plug it into your phone right now so you don't have to worry about it the next time you do use Uber. This will get you a free ride up to $20 off, so that's crazy. If you guys used Uber on New Year's Eve, comment down below how much you guys paid. I'm really curious. Last year, I had to pay $76 and I did not split it with anyone. But this year, I paid $30, which is not bad at all, and I was very surprised. Then I have the Shop app, and I have Venmo, Starbucks, Cartwheel, which is really cool because you can scan things at Target, and sometimes it'll be on sale, and you can use it as a coupon. Then, of course, I have Forever 21 because that is my favorite store ever. Then I have Slice, which is an app that keeps track of all your packages, so it's linked to your email, and it'll tell you, like, oh, your package is arriving, and it'll have all your packages from all the different companies, so you don't have to go through seven different emails and go through the tracking website to find out when your item is gonna be there. Then I have Polyvore, which I used to love putting outfits together on here, but during recruitment, I used this app to look for specific things, and it was awesome because it has literally every single store there is on one site, and then you can just like filter out like romper, pink romper, bodycon pink romper, you know what I mean? So it was so easy to find something really specific. Then I have my watch folder. I have Netflix, Hulu, Fandango, 
MTV, I don't really know why I have MTV. I think I wanted to like watch a show once. Then I have iMovie, which I don't usually edit a lot of videos on, but if my video is too long, I'll just trim it like a little Twitter video or something. Then I have TV Guide, which is awesome because back in Orlando, my TV for some reason doesn't have like a guide. So I use this in place of that. Next, I have this remote app, which controls every TV in this house. So it's so easy to just turn them on or hook up like Wii or something like that. Then the last folder is named shit because I literally don't use any of this shit. Um, so it's the regular calendar app. Next I have the weather channel, Pandora, wallet, you know, okay, you get it. Everything that we don't really use. Okay, so it's finally time that I teach you guys my Instagram secrets. So first we're gonna go into Visco. That is the first app I ever touched with my pictures. We're gonna go into my favorites and I think I'm gonna show you guys how to edit at least two pictures. So the first one I'm gonna pick is a selfie. I'm gonna import that and click edit. So usually for my Instagram, I go in with C7, but sometimes it looks too orange, so maybe I'll try C6, which looks a lot better for this picture because obviously the other one looked way too orange. So I actually like to put the filter at the highest it can go, which is 12. And then first, I will boost up the clarity a little bit so that everything kind of just pops out a little bit more. Sometimes I do go in with saturation and sometimes I take it down a notch. And here, I'm just gonna like take it down a little bit because it's, it's, it's a little too orange still. Then I go into temperature. And again, sometimes I boost the temperature or just go down. It just really depends on how the picture is taken. Usually on my camera, it needs more saturation, but on my iPhone, it needs less, if that makes sense. Um, then I go to tint, and again, I don't really have like a certain formula, but it's either or. So one side's super pink toned, and the other side is like a greenish yellow tone. And I do really like the greenish yellow tone. I like when my skin tone is kind of like yellow. Then I go into shadow, and I use the blue one and bring it all the way down to like 0.5, like barely anything, but still something, because I kind of like that little blue tint. So this is the before and this is the after. Before, after. So I'll go ahead and save that to my camera roll. And then I'll take it into Facetune. Then I'll just smooth my face out a little bit, maybe getting rid of some of the blemishes that I have. It's not too much of a difference, but I do really like to smooth my face out. Then I go into details and I like this the best on Facetune. For example, this picture has like a really cool detailed choker. So I wanna kinda of bring that out and increase the detail on that. So this is the before and the after. And it kinda of just like makes my choker be shown a little bit more. And then I'll do it on my earrings too because I think they're cool. And then you can see them a little bit more. So I really like to do that. And then I'll save that from there. I go through so many editing apps, it's sad. Then I go into Snapseed and I click on Selective and basically you can tap anywhere and you can make a small section of your picture brighter or less saturated or more saturated. So for example, I wanna turn up the brightness on the background and you can do it like that. So this is before and after, before and after. And I kind of just think it makes the picture more brighter. And again, I feel like the eye just gravitates more to it. I usually use this tool for when I'm too orange in some places, so I'll bring the saturation down for example, on my shoulder, I'm kind of too orange there. So that kind of just brings the saturation down a little bit and I'll do it on my face a little bit too. Okay, this is the before and this is the after. So it's not that much of a difference, but I am very nitpicky about my Instagram, so I like to do everything that it takes. And lastly, I'll take it into Darkroom, and I love this app because you can literally edit each color on its own. So let's say the oranges are too orange for me. I like to be yellow, like I said, so I'll bring it up a little bit and, you know, kind of give me a more yellow tone. And I can also, you know, saturate it or unsaturate it. I'm just going to keep that at zero. And Luminous kind of gives you a brighter but not too washed out look. Like, it just makes you look a lot glowier almost and that's basically what goes into my Instagram I'll show you guys again with another photo so again I'm gonna take this into visco and kind of look between c6 and c7 and I kind of almost like c7 a, a bit more than c6 for this picture um, let's see I can even check out all the other ones because I bought them all I just really don't use them 
Okay, we're gonna stick to C7 for this, and I'm gonna put it all the way up to 12 again. Then I'm gonna go back in and do like the clarity thing, a little bit of that. Then the temperature, I think I'm gonna increase the temperature just a little bit. I think I'm gonna go in Snapseed and unsaturate my legs because they're kind of orange, but I want everything else to be higher temperature. Then I'm gonna go into tint, and for this picture, I think I'm gonna make it more pink because it, it's a little, a little too green. It's definitely a preference thing, so it could be different every single time. Then taking it into shadows, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a blue tint, and that's it, and we'll save it from there. Then I'll take it into Facetune and just smooth my skin out a little bit. My thighs are kind of bumpy. Then I'll go into details, and of course I want my choker to be shown a little bit more, so I'll up the detail on that, and then also my key sunglasses. I think those are really cool. And I'll just do it on the outer brim. Then I'm gonna also do it on the pattern of my shirt and my bracelets. Okay, so this is the before and after, for and after. Then we're gonna go into Snapseed and get rid of my orange legs. I'm gonna keep a little bit of it, but maybe this time brightening it will work a little better than saturating it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better. So then save copy. And lastly, we're gonna take it into dark room. And I actually wanna up the greens in this photo because the whole background's green. And basically you can like see the hues of it. You can either do like a, I don't know, seafoam green or a lime greenish. I really like the lime green, so I think I'm gonna keep it like that and brighten it a little bit. Then we're gonna go into the orange because I kinda want my shirt to be a little bit more colorful. But it sucks because when you do wear yellow and you want to change the color, it does change the color of your skin tone if you're, you know, brown like me or just have like a yellow tint in your skin. I'm actually going to take the saturation down a little bit in this picture because it's kind of a little bit much. Okay, that's perfect and I'll save that. Next, I quickly wanted to talk about what cameras I use for certain Instagrams because I use a variety of an iPhone, a DSLR, and a point and shoot camera. So I'm just gonna quickly go through it. So this one I took with an iPhone. As you can see, it's kind of grainy and kind of bad quality. I kind of did an impulse post on New Year's Eve. Then this picture is taken with my Sony A5100 with the kit lens. I love this camera because it has a skin smoothing effect on it and I did not even have to retouch my face with Facetune at all in this picture. It's just that effect on the camera. This one is actually a GoPro. It's my boyfriend's Hero Session 5, I think but I also do have a GoPro. Now that he uses his, I don't have to lug mine around, so that's a plus. This one was also taken with my Sony camera. Instead of the kit lens, I used a fixed lens. I'll have it somewhere on the screen so you guys can know which exactly one it is. And this lens gives a really blurry background. Of course the kit lens does too, but this lens is a 1.8 f-stop, so that's like really blurry. This one is taken with my DSLR camera that I'm using right now, and it's also taken with a zoom lens as well. It is a 24 to 70 millimeters, 2.8 f-stop. So it's also pretty blurry, but not as blurry as the 1.8. This one is taken as well with my DSLR, same lens. This one is the point and shoot, and I think it was the fixed lens, the 1.8. This was the fixed lens on the Sony. Um, can't remember, but I think this was the Sony with the kit lens. This was the Sony with the fixed lens as well. This was actually my iPhone, believe it or not. Pretty good quality. This is on my iPhone as well. This is also on my iPhone. This was my DSLR. So you guys get the gist. I hope that helped you guys out because personally, when I see a really cool Instagram, I will always wanna know what camera they took it on. And I'll definitely be leaving direct links of the cameras and the lenses in the description box below. I'm also gonna be writing a blog post on this topic, so if you guys wanna read a little bit more about how I edit my Instagrams, definitely check that blog post out. I will also have it in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed this What's On My iPhone video, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys!